All right, we ran out of time on Friday to wrap up your lesson. So uh, this time it's going to be me flying solo, and K. Steve can watch all the mistakes I make at home, and it'll be great and glorious, okay? But uh, this actually, this last problem isn't too bad. Um, it's another regression problem, except this time we're going to do the logistic function. And so when you go into your regression, you're going to look for that reg lodge. Okay, so you're, you're looking for reg logistic. And this is going to be your logistic regression key on your calculator, and that's what you're going to pick. And just like we did in the previous problems, um, what you're watching me do right now uh, in the background or on the side is I just used 10-year uh, markers here for these guys all the way down through 2,000, 10 years apiece. And then I just used the small decimals right here that just gave us a good window. Um, the window that I ended up choosing, uh, you'll be able to see here um, for this graph, but it needs to be something where X, the X window would go from uh, zero because we're not interested in what happens before that. And I actually went out to, uh, you know, if you, if you go this way, this is um, all the way down to the year 2000, this would be 100. And I think I went on X all the way out to 250 so we could see the entire curve very clearly. Uh, do you need to go out to 250? Probably not. Do you need to go past 100 to see what the curve looks like? Probably so. <laughs> Uh, on the y-axis, um, this is all determined by our logistic functions. So on the y-axis though, so we could see exactly what's going on, I set my range on the y-axis to go from 0 to 50. And it gave us a really good idea. Do you need to go from 0 to 50? No, but you need to be 30 or larger so that you can get the full graph and see everything that's happening. So uh, as you're going to discover when I punch all these things in, I do get my regression formulas. And for Florida, when I look at the the uh, logistic model for Florida, the thing that I notice is that um, it has a lot higher carrying capacity, a lot higher maximum value that we can get. Remember, with the logistic model, that number on top is your max population. Um, it's the most that you can hold, okay? And, and after you grow, go past that max value, uh, your population will actually just level off. Think about the flu. If the flu were to roll through our school, uh, it would start with one person. And eventually, if every single person got it, that would be about 2,000 people that got the flu. And then nobody else could get the flu. This, so the logistic model allows for that occurrence to happen and allows us to still see exponential growth and still see change and still find a formula for tracking that pattern. But it also takes into account that there's only 2,000 people that can get the flu. And so we don't have an exponential model that just grows off the charts, all right? So these logistic models are great for populations. Anytime you're looking at a specific population, not usually in the germ world or a bacteria world where you're looking at something that doubles or doubles or doubles or like a cancer, something that just grows and grows and grows, but more along the lines of like populations of people or animals or things, uh, things that live and breathe uh, on this big blue planet that we live on. So anyway, back to Florida. The regression model is going to be 28.01 over 1 plus uh, 81.904 e to the negative 0 0.047x. So here's your regression model for Florida. What this is telling us is that there can be a maximum total of pop sustainable population in Florida of about 28 million people. How long is it going to take to get there? Quite a while, which is why I went out to 250 on my graph. Again, you don't need to go out quite that far, but it's what it allows us to see better that way. Why would we say that? Because of the population trends that occur as Florida uh, grew, all right? And notice these trends are always trending up and quite a bit up almost every time. So as Florida trends up, that allows us to adjust this in, in looking at data over the last 100 years, we would come to this conclusion that we could get about 28 million people for a population of Florida. In Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is different. And what I got for Pennsylvania, man, Casey is a much better handwriter than I am, is uh, 12.5794.
over 1 plus 0.937 times e to the negative 0.034x. And so what this tells me for Pennsylvania is its maximal, uh, its maximum population would be about 12 and a half million people. And again, this is just based off of a hundred years worth of data. And it's looking at this population model. And if you'll notice, it starts to level off after 11 million people. It levels off and it grows very, very, very slowly here. So that's an indication to us that it's maybe has reached its maximum population level. Now, in real life, uh, could we conceivably cram a person onto every open space of ground? We, we could, um, but what we're doing is using the actual population models based on data that we've received that we can get um, that are published and known. This doesn't tell us density. It doesn't tell us how people all live or how many people per square foot. It just gives us the general population of each state. So based off, and, and again, it doesn't take into account either the size of the state. I don't know if Florida has more space to live than Pennsylvania does. But when you look at these two graphs and you can compare the population data, what it does show us is that there is a maximum population according to the data that we should get. And Florida and Pennsylvania have very different maximum populations. Or another phrase that you might hear is a carrying capacity. Both of these states have different carrying capacities. And you can see them in the graphs uh, that I've created for you and are, and are shown here. Um, Florida's obviously has a higher Y value and Pennsylvania's is lower. Okay, that's it. That's the last lesson for section two. Hope you enjoyed it.